Philip Schofield, Narcissist, Part 2. Philip Schofield, a British television presenter, has found himself coming under considerable press scrutiny and comment as a consequence of an affair that he had with a much younger man whilst married, and the fact that he failed to disclose this and indeed lied about it to his television bosses. This has prompted many of you to pose the question, is he a narcissist? As always with such circumstances, we must examine a considerable body of evidence which has been accumulated over a sustained period of time to make a determination as to whether we see sufficient narcissistic indicators that get over an evidential threshold and a narcissistic threshold to determine what he is, and indeed if he is a narcissist. Let us start by examining his childhood. Philip Schofield was born in Oldham, Lancashire, to Pat and Brian in April 1962. When he was 18 months old, the family relocated to Cornwall, where Brian worked at a surfboard factory, and Pat ran a guest house. His father was Brian Schofield, who died in May 2008. Schofield has said his late dad would have been proud of him for coming out as gay in his emotional This Morning interview. More on that in future parts. The popular telly star 58 told how he asked his mum Pat, 84, what his father Brian would have made of the brave moment. Speaking on Virgin Radio host Chris Evans' podcast, Philip said, That's like a grenade going off in my head. When I went down to Cornwall, when I told my mum, I said, what do you think Dad would have said? Would he still be proud? Thankfully, she said, yes, he'll think you're brave, and he will always be proud of you. So that is good. My dad was one of the kindest, sweetest, most lovely people ever. Brian died in 2008, aged 72. Pausing there, it would appear that Schofield is seeking validation there from his mother. Possible indicator? Yes, but not the strongest. Schofield previously spoke of his father's death during an emotional chat with a This Morning Caller. He said, My dad died in 2008. He'd been poorly for a long time. We knew it was going to happen, but when it finally did happen, we heard from the hospital. It is this extraordinarily physical thing that a person who is near the end of their life, who without even knowing maybe, waits until family have left the room, and then they go quietly on their own. That, to my mind, evidences a degree of magical thinking. Schofield also revealed how he saved his dad's life after he suffered a heart attack. With regard to his mother, Schofield's mum is Pat Schofield, who's now in her 80s. On Mother's Day this year, Schofield shared a rare snap of him with his lookalike mum. The snap was taken outside Blackpool Tower, with both Philip and his mum Pat beaming as they shot their best smiles towards the camera. Philip wrote alongside the selfie, through thick and thin, she's always there. Happy Mother's Day to my, my, my amazing mum. He explained that when he came out, that his mum had been on the phone all morning. He explained that to his co-presenter, Holly Willoughby, during his emotional interview on this morning, back on the 7th of February 2020. He said that he went down to see her in Cornwall. She said, oh, OK, well, I don't care. He explained that with regard to his father's death, Schofield was 22 at the time of his life-saving intervention. He recalled the traumatic night when he and his family were living in Auckland, New Zealand, in his book Life's What You Make It. What they thought was a normal evening soon changed in a second when Ryan had a heart attack in his chair, a sight Phil says he will carry with him forever. The TV star said that his instincts kicked in to perform CPR immediately, although he had never seen it done, as his brother called for an ambulance and his mother ran to the door for help. Phil continued with his unorthodox CPR methods until the paradigmics, parade, paramedics rather, arrived to take over. After they successfully got him stable and on a stretcher, one of the paramedics handed Phil a small certificate, which he has since lost, that read, Tonight, Philip Schofield saved a life. Brian, who passed away over two decades later in 2008, thankfully survived his heart attack and spent a number of days in intensive care to recover. Reflecting on the evening, Phil said, had the incident happened in rural Cornwall, where his parents lived, the outcome would have been much different, and credits their move to New Zealand for saving his dad's life. Now, with regard to his childhood, it seems largely to have been unremarkable. 
there doesn't appear to be any evidence that supports abuse or neglect, at least not that that has been disclosed. Of course, his role in saving his father's life perhaps could be exaggerated. It could be a revision of history, particularly with regard to the comments he made about performing CPR, even though he'd never seen it done. However, the evidence as it stands does not demonstrate any abuse or any particular lack of control environment that he may have experienced. It could be, of course, that this has just been well hidden and the evidence hasn't been provided. But at this early juncture with regard to his childhood, there is nothing really that particularly stands out in relation to pointing to that he might be a narcissist. Moving on, it's described that from a young age, Philip Schofield was known for his determination to make it onto TV. So he's demonstrating ambition. Well, ambition is linked to being a narcissistic trait, but of itself does not make somebody a narcissist. A former neighbour explained about him, stating that he was obsessed with working for the BBC and was always writing to them, offering to do anything, no matter how menial. This description of obsession, of course, is just one person's subjective view and suggesting that he was repeatedly writing to the BBC might be seen as a sense of entitlement and a possible boundary recognition issue. Indeed, age 10, Philip started writing to the BBC to apply for jobs using a typewriter to disguise the childish handwriting. Possibility there again of showing a sense of entitlement and some form of grandiosity. When he was 11, the Radio 1 roadshow came to Newquay, and he watched entranced as Alan Fluff Freeman, not half, and his team put on a two-hour spectacle. At this point, his brother Tim had arrived. He was Philip's first audience and guest, patiently acting as guinea pig, so that his big brother could interview him in the front room of the family home for the BBC before signing off into a mirror. Many children, of course, play at being on television and play at being an interviewer, but again, this might be evidence of grandiosity. Philip joked that Tim's first words were no comment because he was so sick of being Philip's practice interviewee. At Trevera Senior School, Philip blossomed into a cheerful extrovert joker. At 16, he landed a job on Plymouth Hospital Radio, his first taste of real broadcasting. And he also ran a mobile disco in and around Newquay. He started in the sixth form but was still pestering the BBC. At 17, he finally got a job there as a bookings clerk for BBC Radio Outside Broadcasts. He spent six months living in a room in North London, making all the friends he could at the Beeb. He then spent two weeks as holiday cover, typing out traffic reports for Radio on DJs. Where was his brother in all of this? Well, in a statement given to police, Philip said, I don't have a relationship with Tim like a brother, because there are seven years between us, and I moved away when he was ten. That's an interesting remark, which might belie an absence of emotional empathy. It's also somewhat dismissive and haughty. And furthermore, whilst that's true, that statement is not the whole truth. Because although he did move to London for the BBC job when Tim was 10, Philip rejoined his family when they decided to relocate to New Zealand. Timothy Schofield was always in the shadow of his TV star sibling, Seven years younger, it seemed destined that he was always going to be known as the brother of. However, Tim Schofield is now famous in his own right, though sadly for all the wrong reasons, having been found guilty of a jury of sexually abusing a boy over three years. The case is a tragedy for the victim first and foremost, but it's also signalled the destruction of a fraternal bond. Philip Schofield said that Tim54 had committed despicable crimes and told his Instagram followers, I welcome the guilty verdicts. Yet for all Philip Schofield's understandable desire to distance himself from his brother, in a statement to police he said there was no brother relationship between them because of the seven-year age gap, they were once close enough that Philip took time off work to care for his younger sibling. Accordingly, it would appear that there is some revision of history that has taken place here by Philip Schofield. In 2015, Tim fell seriously ill, understood to be related to the type 1 diabetes he lives with. After helping look after him, Philip said his sibling's recovery was the best Christmas present ever. Again, an interesting thing to say about somebody with whom he apparently had no bond. 
He and his back he and his brother also seem warm as recently as twenty sixteen when Tim went backstage at this morning. Two years previously, Philip had invited Tim to his younger daughter's 18th birthday party and to watch Dancing on Ice, which he presents with Holly Willoughby. Indeed, it was to Philip that Tim turned, as Philip relayed in a statement to the police in September 2021, to say he was suicidal before driving to the Stars London home in a state of heightened agitation. After switching between furiously angry and bursting into tears, he told Philip he had carried out a sex act and watched pornography in the presence of the teenager. Tim told his brother it happened just this time, prompting the TV host to tell him it should never happen again. But he didn't go to the police in relation to his brother. Three months later, Tim Schofield, who was employed as a civilian IT consultant, was ar- uh, arrested and later on was charged and then convicted. He was given a custodial sentence. So an interesting relationship with his brother, whereby he says to the police, I never had any real bond with him, but that was contrary to the evidence. Is this him shirking accountability because he doesn't want to be associated with his brother activities? Well, indeed, it would be understandable for anybody that might respond that way with regard to a brother that has been accused of child sex offences. But the fact is that it does show a chameleon-like nature and a revision of history which provide us with a couple of narcissistic indicators. We will continue with the examination of Philip Schofield in part three. Join me there.